is our number. This is the uh, inaugural edition of Yule of, of City Talk, and we are thrilled and delighted to have here in the studio with us Brian Hensel, uh, the director of the City Street Maintenance Division and uh, communications director for the city, Ginny Miriam, both here with us this morning. So first of all, I want to say welcome to you guys. Thanks for coming on. Great, Peter. Uh, thank you so much for uh, having us. I consider it to be an honor. All right. So let let uh, now you and I have spoken lots. You know about the, every now and then when there's a really big storm, you'll call up and and tell people what what you're doing. But if you wouldn't mind giving us an overview of your division and what you guys do, and uh, just it's all yours. Sure, sure. Well, thank you, Peter. Uh, so I was recently promoted or reorganized, I guess, to a uh, deputy public works director, but streets are still under my supervision, Okay, as well as traffic services and comp shop. And uh, so it's, it's a big responsibility and we have a lot to do and snow events obviously present us with a long list of challenges. And uh, one, one thing I'd like to start out with, and it's something I always say, forgive the broken record, but uh, when we get these snow events, especially the onset, um, please, please drive careful, slow down, Give yourself more time to get to wherever you're going. Give the person in front of you extra room so that you can slow down. And as always, watch for pedestrians and please be careful. Even if even if you're on a roadway or street that looks to be in good condition, isn't slick, it very well could be. And if it isn't, at that point, it may be in five minutes. So, and and even on these snow days, there are still people out there riding their bicycles. Uh, there are. There yeah. are. And, you know, what... If you've been in Missoula for any amount of time, you've probably have heard me talk on various media outlets about our priority system. And uh, that's what we employ. And it's it's a system that I'm not the author of. It was in place long before I showed up. But uh, but it makes sense, though. It, it, it does. Um, and and it's, it's just sort of we're, we're, we, we know that we're not able to get every street done the moment it starts <clears> snowing. <throat> and even oftentimes within days, depending on the size of the event. And so what it allows us to do is we focus the resources and time that we have available on the streets that get the most traffic when we call those priority ones and they're streets that for the most part that's where all the traffic is at any given time and then we follow up on priority twos that are that are bus routes um main routes into businesses uh mm -hmm. streets that have steep slopes even even corners and then we have another category that's priority threes that have less traffic volumes and and all this too is most of this stuff is on our website and i was looking at it this morning and there's a few changes we need to make, but uh, all the text part of our snow plan is on there. Okay. There is one map. I mean, some of the graphics aren't on there, but we have some maps that we use internally for the crews that it doesn't make sense to be on there. <clears throat> now, now so, let, let me just jump in here real quick. Let, if you remember back in 2014, we had that horrible two feet in one day where, where we had the urban avalanche, and it was just horrible. I try to forget about yeah, that. And, yeah. and, and, and so when, when the I snow remember. is falling so fast and so hard, when, when you get the main areas done and they get the schools done, and by that time, it's time to go back to the main areas. I mean, do, do you have to keep doing that uh, and have to leave the other ones for later? Yeah, Peter, and that happens frequently, not just during 2014. Even on this last snow event that started on the weekend, uh, we, we can't leave those main routes untouched. And oftentimes you go out and we'll plow the ice or sand, whatever the case, and an hour or so later, two hours, it looks like we weren't even there. <laughs> I, I had an operator come into the shop the other day, and he was a little upset with night shift. He says, no one was even out in his area. Well, we get online, look at GPS, and two guys had been out in his area. And so I, we can understand the frustration. Believe it, believe me, we feel it also. And I, I would really like one day to be able to have all the resources to get all the streets done, yeah. let's say within 24, 48 hours. Well, snow, snow is like Doritos. We'll make more, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a definitely a renewable resource. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 so a, 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 after, after, you're, after you're done with the main thoroughfares and the schools, and then you get to the residential areas, and uh, th there are lots of folks who live on these little side streets, or we call, you know, uh, French for dead end is cul-de-sac. And, and uh, cul-de-sacs are very a challenge to plow, right? They, they are. And so the last category, and Peter, thank you for that. That's a good description, is what we call our residential streets. And primarily what those are is they're the low-volume streets, uh, not a lot of houses on them, cul-de-sacs, um, typically the ones in, the, in what we call the flats, the flat area of town. And we, we go into those, normally our policy says it about four inches, um, we, we can go in sooner or even later, but the problem with the residential streets is that let's say it takes us three to five days to get our priorities done. 
and it actually stopped snowing. Well, during that time, people are doing their, their business, driving back and forth on those residential streets, compacting that snow right. and clearing out their driveways and doing what they need to do. And then street division comes along five or six days later, blocks their mailboxes and their driveways and their parked vehicles after they've cleaned all that up. Right. A lot of people don't appreciate that. And so some of those berms can be heavy. Uh, they can be snow packed and, or they can be icy berms and chunks and uh, my phone lights up like a Christmas tree and so does my email. Sure, yeah. And, and I, I feel their frustration. And I'll have folks that will call me up and say, why don't you plow my street? So we, when we get out there, then we, we get out there. Then I have the same people that live three doors down. Why did you plow my street? It was fine. It wasn't even slick. On the same street. Right. So it's kind of, no matter what we do, there's a trade-off. I think there's a Ricky Nelson song that addresses that. Is you there? I'd like to hear you, that you, one. You, you can't please everyone, so you have to please yourself, right? Okay, I have heard that one. <laughs> I, I might even have that one. But it, but it's true. And it, it, the snowstorms create, they create so many different issues for us. And it, I, I certainly can feel the frustration. I, I feel it too. Um, we, we gladly, look, when people call in, we try to answer questions and explain why we have to do certain things. The snow berms are an issue for everyone, including us. And I, I tell you what, I have to commend the city of Missoula and the residents in that. You know, most of the people call up and, and occasionally they're, that, let's just say frustrated would be a kind way to say it. Right. But most of the time when we explain, okay, here's why we have to plow the berms the way that we do, or here's why we had to plug up your driveway. They, they understand. And it's, it's a financial thing. It's budget, it's resources. And, and normally, once I explain it to them, they, most of the time, understand. Yeah. They may not still like it, but I think most people go away. And, and one thing I do say, too, is that these snow events, especially the big ones, I see so many people, it brings out the best in them, on the most part. Mm -hmm. I see neighbors helping neighbors. I see guys that just have a little plow on their pickup, and they'll go and help out their neighbors it, just on their own. And I think that's wonderful. And they'll call and tell me about it. And they'll even ask, Brent, can we go plow this cul-de-sac? Uh, yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, it's good to see. It's, it's not all negative, sure. uh, but it's certainly a challenge. Well, we, we, we got to take a quick break. All four phone lines are open. I'm really shocked. 721-1290 is our number. If you want to say hello to Brian Hensel, th this is the snowplow guy for the city. So <laughs> if you have a question or comment, or if you want to, how about a pat on the back? It'd be kind of nice, too. 721-1290, uh, <laughs> he's not used to that, but... <laughs> 721-1290 is our number. We're coming right back with more of Talk Back. This is City Talk. We'll be back. <laughs> Peter, thank you. You have done great leading me into it. So. Oh, yeah. No, that's really yeah. good. Well, I one thing, I, if, if yeah, we don't get a lot on. of calls, I was going to ask you okay, they're coming. About, about, the training, <laughs> about the training that your, your plow drivers get because these trucks are huge. I mean, they're they're big rigs, and and you have to do some pretty fine, on, you know, fine work when it comes to going around, going around cars and going around cul-de-sacs. Cul Present challenge for us. Yeah. Oftentimes, all we can do is one pass in, one pass out, right. maybe turn a little bit, Daddy, right? Just because they can't navigate that kind of. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love you. <laughs> um, How we doing? Okay, Doug, you're number three, okay, babe. You're doing he, fine. You're doing awesome. Well, I have to boast about Brian. You know who appreciates him appreciate more than anybody except me because mm -hmm. he's so good talking to news reporters. Okay. The mayor. Yeah, yeah. The mayor's number one value for staff people is, is he a problem solver? <laughs> he always wants us to solve problems sure. for people. Yeah. Yeah. Brian is the king of that. Doug Chase. Oh, Doug! Doug on first. Doug's, Doug's. Doug will be nice. I know. Doug's great. Love him. He He's me. always treated me so good. His yeah. kids and I He's, are the same age. Yeah, so. He is so fabulous. I, I called know. him up. He was he was telling me something. I said, Doug, I said, what are you doing? Are you retired? How come you have time to call about this? <laughs> <laughs> he is, but you know he's probably doing a million things. Oh, I know. It was funny. Well, Doug's always been great. The guy's getting some age on him, too, but you never know. He told me how <laughs> old he was, and I won't repeat bunny. it. But, yeah, he's, oh, I know. he's doing he's extremely there, like, well. He, look, he, looks young, he looks younger than me. Yeah. He's, so. Here we go. We're going to get uh, Doug on first.
And away we go. Hey, we're back on uh, Talkback. 721-1290 is our number. Front desk Debbie over there. We have Ginny Miriam here in the studio. And, of course, let's get those phones and get to Doug Chase. Doug, good morning, sir. How are you? Doug? Doug? Hello, Doug. Are you there? I am. I'm here. Oh. How are you? <laughs> Good. You're, you're, you're on with Brian. You're on with Brian Hensel. What's, what's going on, sir? I just want to call and just tell him that uh, they do a fantastic job, and I've got nothing but positives about them. They're very responsive. They've got things to do, and if we continue to annex uh, areas and they don't give him additional manpower and equipment, how the heck do they expect him to? Uh, Fight the battle of uh, the white snow monster. Well, that that's a question you want. You want to try to answer that, or, or yeah, I'm sure the mayor's, sure. I'm sure the mayor's listening. So, <laughs> well, Doug, thank you for that, and uh, I sure appreciate the compliment. And I, I I take that to heart. And and it's we do everything that we can with the resources that we have. And I've always tried to run that street division with the philosophy that if there's a way that I can solve a problem. The, the last thing I want to do is go tell council that I need more money. So I always try to look at our procedures and take input from the crew and the public and figure out ways that we can still do better and achieve a higher level of service without going to ask for money. And let, let me let me ask you this. Are, are you bound? Obviously, you, you're, you've got union drivers, things like that. So are, are you, you're, you've got union agreements. You get all sorts of things as far as hours and that sort of thing goes. But when it comes to overtime, uh, how, what kind of discretion do you have on things like that? Uh, we, we do it. Uh, that's, there's a process to go through based on seniority, going through call outs, but the guys are great. Uh, most of the time I, I get plenty of, plenty of guys that are willing to work overtime and we, we do it. We, we have to, um, like I say, if, if there's ways that I can improve our level of service internally, procedurally, I always look to do that. For example, I got a call from vehicle maintenance yesterday. We have three snowplow trucks coming up for replacement. I have, I have trucks that are still 90s vintage. Wow. Well, normally when you get a new truck, you replace the old one, right? Well, I'm keeping them. Um, it's, it's kind of a cost-effective way to increase my fleet. So instead of having to get five new trucks, I'm only going to buy three. So, you know, then people argue, well, maybe those older trucks will start to break down and be less reliable. But so our, our plow trucks, most of them sit most of the year except for winter. So I can get more years out of them. Mm -hmm. That's just one thing. So what, what do you do with an old truck? I mean, are, are, does it go to a smaller community or, or what? How does that work? Uh, the, we follow the procedure for disposing of government property, which normally just goes through auctions. We, we can trade them with other city or government agencies. That happens on occasion. Okay. But a straight division, I tend on, I usually keep them. Oh, oh we, we lost Doug. Put, let the, put, put him back on. Uh, okay, Doug, Doug, we lost you. Go ahead. Yes, I just wanted to say that he has been one of the finest department heads uh, and I've been here since 60 and on the uh, police department beginning in 1963 and uh, all the way through my career, Brian Hensel and beyond my career of when I left the police department, he's an, uh, a citizen of Missoula. I can't, I can't praise his street crews enough and his pothole patchers. I see him out all the time and I know that just irritates people to hit a pothole and he's heard from me on it. And he's been very responsible <laughs> and responsive. And he, he's just a great, great person for the city of Missoula to have as a, a, a head of a department. Well, Doug, the checks, the checks in the mail, buddy. Thanks for the call. Uh, all right. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. All right. Take care. All right. Thanks so much, Doug. All right, let's get uh, Jim on the line. Jim, good morning. You're on Talkback. Hi. Yeah, hey, I just want to also thank Mr. Hensel. I've actually had his number at one point and could call him. When I've had trouble, <laughs> getting my hold of Zach over there in uh, Easy Street done, which we still have trouble ever getting them done. The neighbors have kind of got together and we're doing that ourselves. But uh, what, what I want to say is it just seems kind of like Missoula's priorities are so weird. I mean, giving away free bus rides and bike lanes and all the, this, this, I don't know, I want to call it liberal crap, when we really need more money for snow removal and everything. And I guess what gets offensive is when they want to, Missoula wants to 
fine you for not doing your sidewalks by 9 a.m., which, I mean, I don't know how many of you work and you got to get up early. It's hard to get out there and do your walks like that. I mean, first thing they ought to do is knock that crap off where they're finding people unless it's a real problem. I just, you know, there's got to be a different way. Maybe we need to prioritize the money in this town to the things that actually matter, like snow removal and, and the police department and, and actually going after the bad guys. Yeah, you know? t- tell you what, Jim, I'm, I'm going to let uh, Brian and Ginny address that, okay? Thanks for the call. So now what, what does your department have to do with sidewalks? Well, Jim, that, he brought up a whole bunch of topics that I'm probably going to need another hour or two to go over. <laughs> but uh, so recently, traffic services, we have a small crew, a supervisor, and then two folks in the winter. And what they do is they go out and clear all the sidewalks with a four-wheeler. They do hand shoveling. They apply a granular de-icer to bridge sidewalks, to sidewalks adjacent to city property and an MDT property that we do under contract. And those guys start at 5 in the morning, and it's cold in winter, and, and they're out there. They put forth a tremendous effort to try and get those sidewalks cleared. And most of the time, unless it's a heavy snow event, they can comply with the ordinance usually by the next day. Uh, but on occasion, those guys struggle too. So it, it's it's a tough deal. I, I understand. Snow does, snow does not cooperate. No, no. And and they're in the same boat too. If it keeps snowing for a long time, then they have to go back and repeat the process like everyone. And so right. I, I certainly can understand everyone's frustration with sidewalks. And where streets comes into it is we are prohibited by snow plan to not plow sidewalk or street snow onto sidewalks. And the guys are real good about not doing that. But they, on occasion, it does happen. And so I, I get those phone calls too. It's not I've heard you know the ordinance ones, but uh, people get upset too. They get their sidewalks cleaned off per the ordinance, and then streets comes along and they think that we put the snow back on there intentionally, which we never do. I, I promise. <laughs> and and so what what we do is uh, if we're not in a snow event, I, I try to give us 24 hours, and we'll get out and we will remove that berm snow if we do it. Now on occasion, I do see times where it maybe wasn't us. It may have been. Some people seem to take great joy in trying to drive through those berms in their four-wheel drives. <laughs> I, I may have been guilty of that in high school, possibly, but it, it doesn't really help us because then that snow gets splashed onto sidewalks. And so I go and look, or I send some of our superintendents to go and look, and we'll see if we feel that we actually did it. And if we did it, we will respond promptly. Fantastic. And with that, we're up against another break. So Ken, Eric, and Tim are all waiting to visit with you. It's a great show so far. Uh, We have one line open, 721-1290. We also have our Facebook page. If you'd like to make a comment there, we'll be back with more of City Talk in a moment. Somebody's uh, talking about cul-de-sac being difficult. How about the roundabouts? Um, I, I was going to get into conflict- cul-de-sacs, Peter. I think that's a good one. Okay, the Roundabouts that- aren't too bad if they're some of the larger size ones. Uh huh. We can get those pretty good. There. Okay. Yeah. Um, now the traffic circles in some of the university areas those can be a challenge. Amen. Nobody blames Brian. Amen. We Amen. all blame <laughs> the city council for wasting money on non-essential items while neglecting the streets and public sidewalks. How many plows and drivers are available for snow events? And how many would you need to get every street done by nine? <laughs> that's just. That's I a, would need a lot. You <laughs> couldn't do an it. Army. You couldn't do it. No. Yeah, it you've exactly. got your four tiers. Oh, we'd have totally to have you just have, you just have to marshal the mayor, everybody on down to the 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 the, the secretaries to go out there and shovel shovel snow, right? Well, that is one thing too, Peter. It isn't just us that performs snow operations. Yeah. Parks department they have a yeah. snow plan. Right. Parking commission does. So um, Brian, fire oh, yeah, department, they they'll do. even go out and shovel their snow in front of their station. So does Brian think the sidewalk ordinance is unfair? <laughs> I don't know. I, I can see the value to the greater public good. I mean, nothing frustrates me more when you see little buddies waiting for the school bus and there's no place for them to stand. Well, um, and, yeah, and or, I mean, we can explain what's behind it. It's not up to us to have an opinion yeah, about it. Okay. Sure. That's why it's Facebook. <laughs> yeah. And I don't do Facebook, Deb. I don't look at it. I don't use it. I don't have a lot of it. Well, I just that's learned how. Insanity, man. And it's... <laughs> My personal opinion of it is not favorable. I, I, I myself do not have a Twitter account. I, Me I, either. I, I wouldn't do it. I, mean, I want to get one just so I can follow I, Trump I, and I see how bad he is. No Twitter, no Facebook, no Instagram. Here we go. Let's do it. 
<laughs> All right, we're back on Talk Back, 721-1290. This is City Talk, a very first edition of City Talk. It's going great guns so far. Uh, we've got Brian Hensel here in the studio. The, the uh, kind of the, We're calling him, dubbing him the snowplow guy this morning. <laughs> but um, <laughs> now you wanted to address, before we get back to our callers, uh, cul-de-sacs and what else? Uh, well, let's, let's go with that first. So okay. yesterday uh, we <clears throat> were actually able to somewhat get caught up with our priorities and the warming temperatures helped more than anything. But a lot, as we're, as I mentioned, the residential streets, folks are still having some issues. And what we, we do when people call in, if, if we can, I took several calls on cul-de-sacs. Cul-de-sacs are difficult. You, everyone has probably seen the size of our plow trucks. They're single axle. They can hold eight tons. They're, they're big trucks. And oftentimes those trucks in the smaller cul-de-sacs, they are not able to navigate those tight radiuses and get right up against the curbs. Plus, the way that they have to be plowed is you basically have to create a big pile. You can't just make a nice concentric berm if you can't make the radius. And so oftentimes, the guys are faced not only in the interest of time and, and getting moving on it, um, we always have way more to do than we can get done, is they'll, they'll make one pass in and either back out on some of them because they can't turn around or try and make as tight of a turn as they can and one pass out. And that's usually all we'll have time to do. So yesterday, we were trying to get into those and help people out as we could. I personally talked to several folks and one on Idaho street. I took some up on, uh, uh, what was it? Continental. And, you know, we had our Arlington and we, we did what we can do. And, and yesterday we, we actually depleted all of our sand, uh, stockpiles up at Patty Canyon. Wow. And North side. So we were mixing sand and I had tandems running sand all over town, trying to get us <laughs> refilled for the next one. So I had, I had, I didn't have all of our plows out cause I couldn't. So we were trying to respond to some of those residentials as we could and call this out. Wow. So. All right. So let's, uh, let's get Ken on the line. He's been waiting the longest. Ken, good morning. Thanks for holding. You're on Talkback. Hey, good morning. Uh, yeah, I was just going to ask Brian, uh, the other day, we, you know, we didn't have more of these uh, walking paths and bike trails around Missoula. It's going to be a challenge for getting snow off of those. Uh, and I've seen the different pieces of equipment they use. But the other day, I was on Target Range area, and here was I threw just a private owner clearing that one of those walkways for kids to get to school. He was using a uh, pickup with one of those V plows, just driving right down the middle of that walkway, just plowing the whole thing off both sides, one, one swoop down through there, and he cleared the whole thing. And I'm just wondering if Brian has looked at that, if that's a possibility or, or not. Just uh, a question. Well, Ken, no, great question. Thanks, Although Ken. I'm probably not the right person to answer it. The streets doesn't do any trail work or walkway. Uh, snow maintenance like that or any other maintenance for that matter so i i can't really speak to that i we do have one pickup mounted plow that we use primarily for taking care of bike lanes and it's some of the special circumstances where we have some narrow street widths so I, I i can't tell you it sounds like a good idea though all right let's uh let's get tim on the line tim good morning thanks for holding your on talk back go ahead Hey, good morning. Um, you know, I, I live in Billings now, but I lived in Missoula most of my life up until the last seven years. Um, but it, it's one of those things that one of the things that I I do live on a cul-de-sac over here in the Billings area, and one of the things that I, that they've done um, is they come down our street instead of with the plow, they actually use a grader, and what and they and they don't pile a berm up against the up up against your sidewalk or your curb. They use that grater and they push it all the way down to the cul-de-sac and then make a giant pile in the middle of the cul-de-sac with that grater. And it's, it, it's, I, I've really liked it. And it, it is one of those things that I don't know if you guys have that possibility or, you know, and some of the times it kind of, I think kind of depends on the size of the cul-de-sac too. But it's really been nice because then you're, you don't have a lot of, you can, you can get in and out of your driveway okay. And plus the fact that my kids love it because it's like a natural <laughs> snowboard in the middle of the street. And it, it's just like, wow. it's, it's fantastic. And I mean, my kids are just, they're, they're every single time they do it, my kids are in heaven because they got a whole snowboard that I didn't have to build, you know? And it's kind of funny, but. In, but in, in, the, the, in I, the middle of the street. Yeah. In the middle of the street, but it's a cul-de-sac. I mean, nobody comes down our street except for the people that live on it. But, you know, and the other thing, too, that, that I've noticed that they, over here, they made a change where, like, on the main streets, they, instead of plowing everything up against the sidewalk, um, they have now started plowing it in towards the middle of the street. And so, and, and then, it, then, usually about a day later, they come by with a with with a gigantic snowblower on the front of a front end loader and load it in trucks and haul it out. 
And it's been great because it usually, you know, it's usually frustrating for a day or two and then it's gone. Right. And it just like, and it, and that has been nice. And that's not something they used to do. That's something well, they recently now, changed to. And I'm just wondering if, if they, you know, if they've had that opportunity to do that in Millen. Well, well, I, mean, Tim, I, 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 I do know that you do that. Uh, like on, like on Broadway, yeah. some of the times you'll, you'll put a berm in the middle of the street, right? Yeah. We, we do center plow Thanks, Tim. in a large area of the downtown area. And we do it exactly the same way uh, on the Billings snow plan. Uh, they've kind of done some changes here as of last year. And I've had some communication with them. I don't pretend to be an expert on everything they're say, doing. You, 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 can, you confer with your fellow women, oh, yeah. right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I do. And, and they did something that was interesting is where they have uh, enlisted private contractors, at least, well, one for sure, is that they have hired, if I'm not mistaken, I believe they hired six graders to go out and assist with residential snow plowing. And Billings purchased snow gates for their graders to go out and, and do exactly what, what uh, Tim has said. and. I have kind of looked into it right now. The city, we own two graders. One of them so old, it's not functioning right now. So I have one grader. Um, and, and I've looked into snow gates exclusively. I've looked into plowing with graders. Graders are pushing 300 grand a piece. Leasing them is, is, can be extremely expensive. Although you may be able to get a better deal if you contract it. And it's something that I'm, I'm looking into. And we may, we may try it. We're, there's a bunch of things that have to be sorted out first to get that rolling. But it's something we're looking into, not this year, but maybe in future years. And budget resources is a huge part of that. I was gonna, I was gonna ask you about that. When, when it comes time uh, for for you to ask for for what you need to get your job done, what what is that? What is that process like? Would you do you meet with the city council? Do you meet with the mayor? What what, what do you do? Yes, yes. Um, one thing. Let me go back to the blaze real oh, quick, oh, Peter. Yeah. There is no silver bullet, just so everyone knows, for snow operations. And even those there's there's different cities and counties that use blades and use snow gates. And Sioux Falls, South Dakota is a prime example. They have like 40 some graders and they even say in, under certain depths of snow, um, they don't even attempt to clear driveways, mailboxes because the snow ends up accumulating so much that, that the blades are ineffective and so are the snow gates. So it, it's not perfect. It can help under, under smaller events, but under small events, you don't get as big of berms anyway. They're not as big of an issue. So it's a tremendous resource. It's, it's an expense and it, it might be cost effective for us. It's something that I'm, I've been looking into investigating, but I haven't necessarily, we haven't gone through the whole process. Yet. It's got to be difficult because we're, we're, we're looking at maybe five, six events out of the, out of a 12 month period. Correct. Where, Correct. where you have all this expense, you know, slammed into this one small yep. time period. Yep. And, and not even, I mean, I would even say less than that, Peter, say what, two and a half, three months. And then how many snow days within that time frame? And so back to your, your council question is, yeah, I always, I, I put forth, especially in the last few years, I'm finding where as the city has grown and the service level expectations have gone up from the public and that me being able to just manage increased service requests and levels of service with procedural changes and trying to save money, which I've been fairly successful at, I believe, I, I, I'm, I'm going to have to come to the idea that I need more money. I mean, it's we're spending more money on de-icer. The prices are going up. Everything I virtually use except fuel has gone up in price <laughs> and there's only so much I can do. And, and believe me, I'm still doing it. I've done things even this year where we switched to different granular de product that saved us quite a bit of money. So we're still trying to do it, but there comes a point where, especially with the annexations, I, I, I need, I need more. I, okay. so I do go to council and go through the process and, I please, see you got a break. Please, sir. May I have some more? <laughs> well, <laughs> and there's a process, but it's the same process that all the divisions go through. Right. I doubt you're going to hear any city division that's going to say, oh, I'm good. I don't need anything. Yeah. No uh, more money. Just uh, cut, cut my budget by about 20%, would you? Sure. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to come right back. We have Eric and Jeff both waiting. And uh, also, I'm not sure who that is. Uh, it might be behind <laughs> me. Anyway, 721-1290 is our number. We'll be right back. <laughs> And what's the cost? I'm so, so graders cost three hundred thousand. You are the cost of a snow plow. Oh, for everything Hi. standard plow, I'm pushing Hi. two, okay. two hundred and eighty somewhere there, hundred and eighty to two. Now I want you to look at but this. graders can. This is this is this, what happens when we have city it. people on. There. Oh my gosh! This is great. What do you I'm call that? A, so a, happy. This, this is. This what do you is, call that? A rock think star? It's us. I think it's the topic. I, I, actually, no, actually, um, thank you for that. Actually, that's wonderful. What this what this is is communication, and and you know, it, I, I think there's just been a, yeah. a, a a backlog of lack of communication, and that's why I have love having you guys on the, <laughs> on the radio so you can just talk. 
one of my problems. We do, want, people, we do though, communicate really in a lot it. of ways. I know, I know you. They're like, we don't blame There are Brian. a few that do. <laughs> <laughs> believe me. You know, and Less. actually, we get this the question and comment all the that time. That might have been one right there. Of, why are you spending money on this when you could be spending it on right, this? Right. And that oh. is. Or not spending it at all. Right, and that's something that every single government, I mean, it's local governments, right. state, federal, all go through, and you listen and listen and listen well, and if, see if what people want. If you want people want. to find out what, yes. what it would be like, have a partial city government shutdown sometime. Oh, God. And, then, and then just watch them come out of the woodwork and say, well, where's my snowplow and where's my this and where's my that? Well, well, and there are always going to be different opinions about, we shouldn't yeah. spend money on sidewalks or bike lanes. We should spend more. You know, it's it's all out. <laughs> what there. do you do during the summer months? What don't we do? Dude? <laughs> Chip don't seal. Know that's why I'm asking. Chip seal. Chip seal. Sweet. We crack seal. We sweep. We pave. We pass. Fix in my pocket. We dig some. And then pretty soon it's leaves. Yeah. Uh, there's, leaves there's, come there's, around. There's no slow season. <laughs> no. Okay, that's oh, good to know. Oh. Seriously. Oh, I love it. I will. This. Okay, we're back on talk back, and uh, Brian and Ginny are now. Officially, talk back all stars because all four lines <laughs> are full. And someday, someday we're actually going to have a t shirt <laughs> if our budget can. You talk about your budget. How about my budget? All right, let's get the. We don't have a budget. Anyway, Eric's on the line. Eric, you're up first. Go ahead. Hello. Hi, uh, Eric. What's I, up? I have some commercial property out by the airport. Okay. And I was wondering uh, did you immediately take over that duty of plowing out here in the industrial park? Uh, we, we did, I, what was it? January 20 or no, December, December 20, is that when it was? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we did. And, and so, um, well, I haven't noticed a difference. You, you don't have any more resources. You're just having to start earlier. Is that how it works? Well, we had to uh, commit another person to that area. What, what the drivers tell call area a, um, it's, it's been a little bit of a stretch for us. So well, yeah. you're, you're doing a good job. And so previously who was plowing the county or the state the, the county was and and i talked to some of the folks at the county and they gave me a few pointers on some of the issues they have out there and so i'm i'm happy to hear that uh, you haven't really seen a difference yes and i will say the county they they do a really good job plowing they so i'm, I'm glad to hear that all right thanks thanks for the call appreciate that all right uh, jeff's up next hi jeff you're on talkback go ahead Good morning. Uh, let me get, come off speaker here real quick. I was out doing my own plowing. <laughs> um, kind of got alluded to a little bit earlier, but um, we talked about uh, graders and stuff. But um, is there a possibility of doing any sort of contract work with independent folks to uh, increase effectively the size of the fleet? I mean, basically, you got a lot of people running around with their trucks and stuff, and um, you know, there's organizations who can do sidewalks for much cheaper than what the city charges uh, per hour. And I was just wondering if that's something that's possible, contracting out to individuals, or is that something that the People's Republic of Missoula just would not even count with? <laughs> Well, well, Jeff, thanks for the call. Now, Ginny, you and I were talking about this, especially with, with sidewalks, um, that there are organizations that are that have put forth their services to help folks with sidewalks, but it's not quite as inexpensive as you thought it was going to be, right? No, that has been the case. Um, we use uh, Missoula Works, which is a nonprofit, and they are doing a good job, but it turns out that the way the snow has been this winter, and they're responding to some complaints where, for instance, people who were gone during the holidays, and there's this ice buildup, and so they're out there chipping away. So if you ever tried to do that, that takes a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So all right. So let, let's get back to the phones, and Jaime is up next. Jaime, good morning. You're on Talkback. Hi. Good morning. Hi. What's up, sir? Uh, the previous caller kind of touched on this. My brother-in-law is from the East Coast, and I don't want to get shot saying that the East Coast does things great. Well, they may have but more money to work with, yeah. It's true. He is a construction contractor like me, and he was telling me that in the wintertime, he contracts with the local municipality to do snow plowing. It's just part of their snow plan, I guess. Okay. And many others do as well. And I didn't know if that was something that the city had looked into or not okay well thanks for the call well and and i kind of went into it a little bit on the, one of the other callers but uh, as i said billings has they started doing it last year as their first year 
I understand Helena was also looking at it for this year. They had budgeted some money to go out for requests for pricing from local contractors. And when I spoke to them, I think it was last week, uh, they were not able to get that part of it done for, I, I don't know all the reasons why, but apparently they, they didn't get the response, I guess, that they needed apparently or what they wanted. It's, and I need to get back with them. Um, but it's, it's something that um, we're looking into. So I, I'm not going to guarantee it or promise it. There's always things, there's always so many complications that have to be dealt with when you do something like this from insurance to negotiations. You just, I don't want to make any promises I can't keep, but we are looking into it. Likely not this year, but possibly for next year. Let's see what happens. Give me a little time. Right. Now, I, I think sometimes, Brian, there, well, let, let, let's go, Jason. He, he, we put our callers first. Jason, you're on Talkback. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I just got a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I, I drive a uh, rear-wheel drive van all over Missoula, and in six years, I've never not been able to get to a customer's house, so appreciate your guys' work there. Um, I also grew up on the East Coast, uh, just south of Buffalo, New York. We used to get bad snow there, sometimes six feet in a couple of days. And uh, they had a machine called a snow cuber, and I don't know if you've ever heard of one, but it basically kind of looks like a snowblower attaches to a front-end loader, and uh, they would berm all their snow and then use that to, uh, it basically compacts the snow and removes the air. And you can get uh, approximately four or five dump truck loads worth of snow into one dump truck with a snow cuber. So with your limited resources, it may be something that you guys could look into. Um, it, may, it may be a machine that would be worthwhile purchasing. A snow cuber. Snow cuber, it's called. Yep, uh, you can look it up on YouTube, just snow cuber, and uh, they're pretty cool machines. Uh, just, I appreciate that tip. I had not heard of that, so I will definitely look into that. All right, thanks for the call. A snow cuber. It sounds like a band. <laughs> Or, 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 or go you like a, a snow, you know, somebody with uh, a snowboarder would do. Yeah. Well, and, I'm going to do my snow cuber now. So anyway, yeah. and, and Peter mentioned a little bit on our center plowing areas that we do downtown, and that we do have a truck mounted snow blower. I guess we call it the Oshkosh because that's the company that made it back in the early '60s. Um, anyway, great machine works well for us, and it is amazingly efficient at picking up those berms with our tandems. And what we run into often though is that if it doesn't quit snowing. I, I cannot commit that same crew right. and pull them out of snow plows for obvious reasons to go pick up those center berms. So, uh, you know, the downtown folks and everyone will notice that sometimes those center berms stick around for a while. Right. Center berms can be an issue as they melt. They can block view. They can get in the way of pedestrian travel. They, they so they get hard too, right? They get, yeah. Um, same deal with the folks with the four-wheel drive. Sometimes people like to try to tackle those. So <laughs> I caution against that. Please yeah. don't. Um, so, like I say, there's always a trade-off of snow operations. Right. So we're up against uh, our final break. It's so a 60-second timeout. All four of our phone lines are open. So if you've been trying to get through and you weren't able to, give us a call, 721-1290. Really appreciate Brian and Ginny being here to uh, the very first edition of City Talk. And that uh, we would love to hear from you, 721-1290. Snowcuber by Snowcom. And oh. some oh, people do uh, Snowcuber. Some people do snow.cuber, but check this. Brian, <laughs> I want one. It's probably, <laughs> I, I do too, and it's probably between a half and a million dollars just guessing. Oh, okay. I'm just, just how stuff is. Here you yeah. go, sweetheart. That's I will look into information. it. Yeah. Heck yeah. Now, th th this is where you need a wealthy benefactor to say, hey, I'm going to give this to the city. <laughs> hey, Denny, where are you? <laughs> wow. Yeah, YouTube that. Find out how much it costs. <laughs> I want to find out how much it costs. Okay, we are back. On Talkback, 721-1290 is the number. Brian Hensel, Ginny Miriam, uh, both joining us here from the city of Missoula. Very first inaugural edition of City Talk. And by the way, thank you guys for being here. I know you guys are busy. So to spend an hour of your week uh, once a month to come join us, we sure appreciate it. So now, um, the snow cuber, uh, you, you had kind of uh, looked into this a little bit? or I, I had not. Okay. Um, there, there once in a while, there's, there's always new pieces of snow removal equipment that, that I've looked at some of them. I've, there's even one that's, I won't mention the name, but one of them that can even melt the snow. Wow. A few communities have them and they're, they're really expensive. I think seven, 800,000. Um, right. they, you know, they, they work well every there's yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the newer it is, the more expensive. Uh, usually yeah. Is. yeah. I mean, 
So, I mean, there's definitely some other options out there, and, and I'm always looking for those. I, it, I always am trying to find ways to improve yeah. what we do. And so now, let, let, know, let me ask, I this. really do appreciate the tip on it. We, we only have a few minutes left. We have, we have uh, seven minutes left in the show. So I guess what, what I could do, what I would do is um, what can the citizens of Missoula do to make your job easier? Uh, when we have these big snow events, should we like pull into the driveway, get off the street? Uh, what, what should we do? Well, Peter, thank you for that, and I was hoping to have an opportunity to bring that up. So one of the issues that we have frequently is uh, a lot of times folks, I don't know if they're frustrated or they're just not thinking what the repercussions would be, is a lot of folks throw the snow either from the berms that we leave in front of their driveways, mailboxes, and park cars, or even some contractors, they, they maybe inadvertently will take snow out of a parking area that they're, they're clearing and pushing out into the right-of-way uh, or along the curb line, and, and that causes us trouble. Um, it, it, number one, and first and foremost, if you have a street that's plowed and uh, you throw big chunks of snow out in the middle of it, what if somebody runs into it? What if there's an accident? Um, that isn't enough. That's terrible. And you're creating a liability for yourself or could be. Um, the other thing is when other folks are pushing snow into the right of way, that limits the space for the city to push the snow into that curb line. And so that can cause us trouble. And I've even seen piles so big where they're they're encroaching into the driving lanes or covering up bike lanes and so I, I just really ask folks that you know throw your snow to the side on your yard um it'll just be less irrigation you have to pay for next summer <laughs> contractors you you need to pick a spot in a parking lot and, right. and i know you're going to lose some parking areas but it's it's such a better alternative for everyone and that's probably my biggest thing okay let's uh, let's get harry on the line good morning harry you're on talk back with brian hensel go ahead well, good morning. How are you? Uh, I just uh, first of all, I wanted to say this is a great idea for a program. Well, uh, I'm glad you're listening. Thank you. Well, well, I am. I'm just I'm, I'm excited about it, and uh, uh, it's, it's 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 something that's needed to happen for a long time. Uh, uh, as far as snow removal goes, uh, I don't know if you could do much better than they do around here. You know, really. I mean. Uh, uh, they work. Uh, they Brian, work uh, Brian they is smiling right now. I guess you're right. <laughs> Thank you. Well, they, well, they, well, they work all the time. You know, uh, uh, I'm a senior citizen, so I have to, uh, I have to walk a lot and uh, and uh, and ride the bus. I'm also trying to uh, uh, cut down on my carbon imprint, but that's a different story. Uh, but anyway, I love the mountain lion. It's just, it, it's one of the most wonderful things in the world, and. Um, Thank God the mountain lion guys will come by the, uh, the by the snow at, at the curb sometimes and just drive almost right up in the on the sidewalk to pick me up, you know, and uh, which is good because I carry a cane. And uh, um, but uh, you know, I would love to see. Uh, you know, I don't know if you can do this or not. You know, I know you got just an impossible task out there. It's uh, it's scythious in its scope. You know, you're rolling that rock up the hill, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> At any rate, uh, you know, I, I wish that somebody would be uh, in front of the. Uh, I wish somebody would be in front of the bus terminals, just, uh, just kind of, you know, making sure that uh, people can get to the bus easier. You know, because uh, sometimes getting in or out of a bus is just very treacherous. You know. All right. It, yeah. Well, so anyway, and uh, I also wanted to say, you know, other than the fact that I'm just so glad you guys are doing this, uh, Jenny, uh, it's so nice to hear your voice. Uh, uh, I, I miss your presence at the Missoulian so much. Oh, thank you so much. Well, there you go. See, 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 yeah. see. All right. Well, thank, thanks for the call, Harry. You're welcome. All right. All right. So, so now, what exactly is he talking about? Well, when people go to a like a mountain line bus uh, at terminal area there, where where the, the snow is kind of piled up and it's difficult for them to get on and off the bus. Yeah, um, we occasionally get those calls. I, I suspect Mountain Line probably hears more about that than we do. Right. And uh, we we do not terribly often. We'll go and try to remove some of those those berms. Um, I think Mountain Line are probably the ones that do it more so. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I I think they're getting another truck plow to assist with that exact thing. So um, hopefully we'll see an improvement with that service and. Uh, it, it's it's tough because yeah those those buses have to pull right up on top of the berms to pick folks up and and that's certainly fine for them to do sure now the buses are big they you can get through that right yeah yeah um they they will certainly we we help them they will call us if there's a street that's slick or they're having trouble with 
that's primarily what we deal with as far as mountain lion goes. So yeah. I, I don't want to speak too much for them. But. I, I, I live on a hill, and what I appreciate is, is the sand uh, because uh, th there are times when I'll pull out of my driveway and I'm not going anywhere. So I back, back in my, and then I go back down and uh, to back through Linda Vista and up the other way. And uh, when, when, when I call a concern, by golly, within 24 hours, that's done. And I really appreciate that. Thank you for that. So, okay, so now we're almost out of time. Uh, what what final message would you what message would you like to leave to folks? Like for instance, how to how to contact your office, how to uh, how to uh, uh, make a request for a, a snow plow, as long as we do it nicely. <laughs> well, how, how do we do that? Uh, well, there's a couple ways. <clears throat> as always, I I try to refer folks to our website. There's information on there. There's ways that you can report not just snow issues, but also potholes uh, issues with bike lanes, and that's that's a really good way to do it. It creates a record. Uh, with the use of the uh, website, and uh, we always respond to those as soon as we're able. And you know, if you're old-fashioned like me, I certainly don't mind taking phone calls. And our staff is always really good about either calling people back, and uh, we'll, we're happy to to talk with folks and try to. Would you mind? Explain. Would you mind giving the number? Sure, sure. Uh, uh, the direct number to the street division is five five two six three six zero. Does that spell anything? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> Like, well, I can't spell pothole. It's too pothole? <laughs> I, I suppose I could look. <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you to both of you, and uh, we look forward to a very long relationship here doing this because uh, obviously our listeners are hungry for it, and uh, we appreciate the information. Well, and Peter, thank you so much for having us, and, and yes, thank you to great. all your listeners. And I, I sure appreciate the positive input that we received. And so thank you again. You I look forward to being on again. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe next year. Yeah, well, what, when, it, when, it's, when it's pothole season, we could do it. Absolutely. Oh, no, no, not that or, or, <laughs> <laughs> All right. The, uh, coming up on Monday, Annalise is going to have a couple of guests, uh, and uh, so we'll continue on. But have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Please drive safely out there. There is a winter weather advisory until 11 o'clock. So take care, everybody. Have a good weekend.